This episode is brought to you by IVP. A long-lost journal by Christian abolitionists from the 1800s was recently discovered in a Michigan storage closet. What followed was a fascinating dialogue on race and faith featuring multiple scholars, which has now been collected into a book. Awakening to Justice gathers respected experts and offers new insights for Christians who want to understand the church's roots in pursuing racial justice, as well as learning about the experiences of enslaved and freed people in abolitionist history and spirituality. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive this book for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Inner Varsity Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. A daily audio Bible podcast read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, 1 Chronicles 12, verse 19. Some men from Manasseh joined David when he went with the Philistines to fight against Saul. But in the end, they did not help the Philistines because, after taking counsel, the Philistine lord sent David away, saying, It would be disastrous for us if he deserts to his master, Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 29 through 1 Samuel chapter 30. Chapter 29. David is rejected by the Philistine leaders. The Philistines assembled all their troops at Aphek, while Israel camped at the spring that is in Jezreel. When the leaders of the Philistines were passing in review at the head of their units of hundreds and thousands, David and his men were passing in review in the rear with Achish. The leaders of the Philistines asked, What about these Hebrews? Achish said to the leaders of the Philistines, Isn't this David, the servant of King Saul of Israel, who has been with me for quite some time? I have found no fault with him from the day of his defection until the present time. But the leaders of the Philistines became angry with him and said to him, Send the man back. Let him return to the place that you assigned him. Don't let him go down with us into the battle, for he might become our adversary in the battle. What better way to please his Lord than with the heads of these men? Isn't this David of whom they sing as they dance? Saul has struck down his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. So Achish summoned David and said to him, As surely as the Lord lives, you are an honest man, and I am glad to have you serving with me in the army. I have found no fault with you from the day that you first came to me until the present time. But in the opinion of the leaders, you are not reliable. So turn and leave in peace. You must not do anything that the leaders of the Philistines consider improper. But David said to Achish, What have I done? What have you found in your servant from the day that I first came into your presence until the present time, that I shouldn't go and fight the enemies of my lord the king? Achish replied to David, I am convinced that you are as reliable as the angel of God. However, the leaders of the Philistines have said, He must not go up with us in the battle. So get up early in the morning, along with the servants of your Lord who have come with you. When you get up early in the morning, as soon as it is light enough to see, leave. So David and his men got up early in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines. But the Philistines went up to Jezreel. Chapter 30 David Defeats the Amalekites. On the third day, David and his men came to Ziklag. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They attacked Ziklag and burned it. 
They took captive the women and all who were in it, from the youngest to the oldest. But they did not kill anyone. They simply carried them off and went on their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burned. Their wives, sons, and daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the men who were with him wept loudly until they could weep no more. David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinom the Jezreelite and Abigail the Carmelite, Nabal's widow. David was very upset, for the men were thinking of stoning him. Each man grieved bitterly over his sons and daughters, but David drew strength from the Lord his God. Then David said to the priest Abathar, son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. So Abathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Should I pursue this raiding band? Will I overtake them? He said to him, Pursue, for you will certainly overtake them and carry out a rescue. So David went, accompanied by his six hundred men. When he came to Wadi Basor, those who were in the rear stayed there. David and four hundred men continued the pursuit, but two hundred men who were too exhausted to cross the Wadi Basor stayed there. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him bread to eat and water to drink. They gave him a slice of pressed figs and two bunches of raisins to eat. This greatly refreshed him, for he had not eaten food or drunk water for three days and three nights. David said to him, To whom do you belong and where are you from? The young man said, I am an Egyptian, the servant of an Amalekite man. My master abandoned me when I was ill for three days. We conducted a raid on the Negev of the Carathites, on the area of Judah, and on the Negev of Caleb. We burned Ziglag. David said to him, Can you take us down to this raiding party? He said, Swear to me by God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to this raiding party. So he took David down, and they found them spread out over the land. They were eating and drinking and enjoying themselves because of all the loot they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. But David struck them down from twilight until the following evening. None of them escaped, with the exception of 400 young men who got away on camels. David retrieved everything the Amalekites had taken. He also rescued his two wives. There was nothing missing, whether small or great. He retrieved sons and daughters, the plunder, and everything else they had taken. David brought everything back. David took all the flocks and herds and drove them in front of the rest of the animals. People were saying, this is David's plunder. Then David approached the 200 men who had been too exhausted to go with him, those whom they had left at the Wadi Basor. They went out to meet David and the people who were with him. When David approached the people, he asked how they were doing. But all the evil and worthless men among those who had gone with David said, since they didn't go with us, we won't give them any of the loot we retrieved. They may take only their wives and children. Let them lead them away and be gone. But David said, no, you shouldn't do this, my brothers. Look at what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and has delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to you in this matter? The portion of the one who went down into the battle will be the same as the portion of the one who remained with the equipment. Let their portions be the same. From that time onward, it was a binding ordinance for Israel, right up to the present time. When David came to Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, Here's a gift for you from the looting of the Lord's enemies. The gift was for those in the following locations, for those in Bethel, ramoth Negev, and Jatir, for those in Arer, Sifmoth, and Ishtamoah, and Rachel, for those in the cities of the Jeremelites and Kenites, for those in Hormoth, Borashan, Athok, and Hebron, and for those in whatever other places David and his men had traveled. New Testament reading. John chapter 11, verses 1 through 37. Chapter 11, The Death of Lazarus. Now a certain man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village where Mary and her sister Martha lived. Now it was Mary who anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and wiped his feet dry with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, look, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, the sickness will not lead to death, but to God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. 
So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he remained in place where he was for two more days. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples replied, Rabbi, the Jewish leaders were just now trying to stone you to death. Are you going there again? Jesus replied, are there not 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks around in the daytime, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks around at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After he said this, he added, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. Then the disciples replied, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had been talking about his death, but they thought he had been talking about real sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us go to, so that we may die with him, speaking with Martha and Mary. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been in the tomb four days already. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, so many of the Jewish people of the region had come to Martha and Mary to console them over the loss of their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will grant you. Jesus replied, your brother will come back to life again. Martha said, I know that he will come back to life again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. And the one who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She replied, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who comes into the world. And when she had said this, Martha went and called her sister Mary, saying privately, The teacher is here and is asking for you. So when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had come out to meet him. Then the people who were there with Mary in the house consoling her saw her get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the people who had come with her weeping, he was intensely moved in spirit and greatly distressed. He asked, where have you laid him? They replied, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Thus the people who had come to mourn said, Look how much he loved him. But some of them said, This is the man who caused the blind man to see. Couldn't he have done something to keep Lazarus from dying? This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the Holy Scriptures. We thank you for the Bible. We thank you, oh God, that we get to learn about you and we get to learn from you, from you, oh God, through your word, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and I pray that for all of us who are listening in, oh God, and studying your word week to week or day to day, oh God, I pray that you would stir up into us a curiosity that causes us to listen in and then to reach out for our Bibles and commentaries and, and for us to dig deeper and deeper and deeper and to continue learning, not to be puffed up with knowledge, but again, to grow, to grow in grace, to grow in compassion, to be holy because you are holy, to be set apart and edified and built up, oh God. So we thank you. Thank you for the power of your word. We thank you, oh Lord, that you are indeed powerful. You're powerful in your might, in your ability to speak the universe into existence, to make humanity, but you're also powerful in your love, your compassion, oh God. And this is why, oh Lord, we are so troubled when we lose a dear loved one, when we see pain and violence and death in our world and we see sickness and illness attack people's bodies, young or old, oh God, and it causes us to weep and to grieve and we are indeed exhausted. We are a world that is filled with grief right now. We have been walking, crawling in the valley of the shadow of death, oh God. And so we look to you, O oh God, the one who is compassion and, and we are like Mary and Martha saying, if you had been here, because we know that you're mighty 
and we know that you're mighty to love. And so we at times are lost and confused and saddened and hurt and even angry, oh God, when we believe you should have intervened in a certain way, when you should have preserved life according to our will and our heart's desire, oh God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you chose to raise Lazarus from the dead, that you wept with those who wept, you demonstrated compassion and understanding, that you went to these sisters, these sisters who were in deep, deep grief, but yet they did not grieve like those without hope. They grieved in a way that demonstrated that they had met you, that they knew you, and they knew your heart and your compassion. And even in the midst of our own grief, as some of us are grieving people at this very, very moment, help us, O oh God, to grieve like people who have met the one who has been resurrected. Help us to grieve like people who even through our tears entrust ourselves to you. God, would you show up in our lives at places of death and pain and sorrow and deep, deep grief, resurrected Jesus, would you speak life into our heart where we feel as though our hearts will never be mended back together, where our wounds are too big to be healed? Will you remind us that you are the God who took on wounds for us, that you see us, you love us, you have wept over your people, and yet you have the power and compassion to raise us up anew? So, oh God, by the power of your spirit, would you meet even the listener right now whose heart is broken, whose heart is riddled with grief, who is longing to see that resurrected power in a grief that feels like a fog and so persistent, whether it is but a day, but a week or 50 years. Oh God, speak healing to grief, the God who has wept. And Lord, we thank you that in you we have the resurrection, that we need not fear life or death because we have found ourselves caught up in your mercy and your grace and your resurrection power. Remind us of that. Would you speak that truth over us by the power of your spirit as we begin to falter and we grow weary and tired and weak? Thank you. You are the God who bottles each and every one of our tears as the Psalms remind us, and you will redeem every single one of those, O oh God. It is in your name and even with tears, we entrust ourselves with you. Amen and amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag get in the word and hashtag truths table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. Let's go slow, take